Hi folks, today we're diving deep into Unreal Engine 5 Sequencer, exploring a powerful technique, dynamically change material properties within Sequencer. This is a scene unfolds with an ancient obelisk standing tall in a dense forest, a mysterious robot approaches, examining the intricate carving, suddenly as the robot touches the obelisk, the symbols on its surface begin to glow with an eerie light. We're going to recreate this effect in Sequencer today demonstrating how to control material properties like emissive intensity over time, adding a dynamic and captivating element to your animations. Alright guys, before we dive into Sequencer, let's take a look at how I set up the material for the obelisk. I will start with four texture, base color, roughness, normal, and emissive color, and they are right here. Next, I'm going to create a new material and rename it as obelisk. Then I will open the material editor and will connect each texture to its corresponding node. So let's bring these textures and connect the base color to the base color, emissive color to emissive color, normal to normal, and finally roughness to roughness. In the next step, I will create a material instance from this material and will assign it to the obelisk in my scene. Now, as you can see, the symbols on the obelisk are currently emitting a white light due to the emissive color texture, but we want more control. We want to be able to adjust the color and intensity. So let's go back to the material editor and I'm going to bring a constant four vector by holding the four key on the keyboard and click on a blank space. Next, I'm going to convert this constant four vector into a parameter and let's name it as emissive color. Then I'm going to add a multiply node by holding the M button on the keyboard and click on a blank space. And I'm going to connect the emissive color texture and the emissive color parameter to its inputs. This allows us to multiply the original emissive color with the user defined color. However, we still need to control the intensity of the emission. To achieve this, I will add another multiply node and will bring a constant scalar by holding the one key on the keyboard and click on a blank space. Then let's convert it to parameter and name it as emissive intensity. And we'll connect it to the multiply B input. And let's set the default value for the emissive intensity on one. And this gives us a precise control over both the color and the intensity of emission. So let's go back to the scene and check what we've done. All right, guys, now, as you can see, we have the emissive intensity and emissive color parameters on our material instance. And now that we have our material instance set up with these parameters, we can start controlling them in Sequencer. But this time, let's set another color for our size. An orange one would be OK. And with that, then we can start controlling them in Sequencer. So let's bring the obelisk parts into Sequencer. And to keep things organized, I will isolate each part to work on them individually. All right, now for each part, I will click on the plus sign under the mesh and add a static mesh component. Then on the static mesh component, I will add a slot material instance. So as you can see in our animation, the robot touches the obelisk at a specific moment and we want the emission to start after this touch. So in this regard, from the slot material instance, we can now bring any parameter we want into the sequencer. So in this case, we will bring the emissive intensity parameter. And again, I'm going to do the same process for the second part of the obelisk. Now we can add keyframes to these parameters. At the beginning of the animation, we'll set the emissive intensity to zero, effectively disabling the emission. Then, after the robot touches the obelisk, we'll add a keyframe and increase the emissive intensity to one and even more. But before that, we'll add another keyframe and keep it zero. And I'll repeat this process for each part of the obelisk, ensuring that the emission effect is synchronized across all the components. And there you have it. We have successfully added custom parameters to our material and dynamically controlled them within Sequencer. This technique of controlling material properties in Sequencer opens up a world of possibilities for creating dynamic and captivating visual effects. Imagine rain droplets interacting with a wet surface, fire flickering and changing intensity or even the color of an object shifting in response to environment cues. 
the application is truly limitless. I hope this tutorial have been helpful. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more Unreal Engine 5 tips and tricks. See you in the next video.